today we have uh, Austin Taylor from Life Church in Oklahoma City, and uh, they have been a partner of ours for a few years. So, Austin, why don't you take a few minutes and tell us a little bit about yourself, um, your family, your uh, how you got to Life Church, what role you have, and give us a little bit insight into who Austin Taylor is. Well, first, thanks for having me. I'm real excited to be here, and just uh, any chance to get to talk about Bible translation is always a, a great use of time. So. Thanks for having me here. Um, my name is Austin Taylor, and I live here in Oklahoma City. I've lived here most of my life. Uh, this is home for me. And I've uh, been married for 11 years to my wife, Tiffany. We have a three-year-old son named Cannon. We call him our Cannonball. Oh, right. He is uh, equal parts adorable and crazy, just like any other three-year-old. Um, I've been on the Life Church team here for coming up on 12 years and uh, attending for almost 20 years. So uh, my family started attending Life Church when I was a teenager. And I don't fully remember, I remember pieces of this moment, but not the full thing. But um, the story goes that, you know, my family came to the first service um, that we attended together. And at the end of it, I turned to my mom and said, hey, mom, can we stay for the next one? And she's <laughs> like, like, when your teenage son asked to stay for another church service, that's probably a good sign that uh, this is where you should be. And so my family uh, had kind of like a family meeting after that moment and said, okay, if we're going to do this, we're going to go all in. We're going to make this our church home. We're going to serve. We're going to tithe. We're going to pray. We're going to join life groups. And I'm so thankful that they led our family that way because it has just changed our family's lives uh, to be part of this wow. church in the last couple of decades. Uh, my mom came on staff shortly after that. So she's still uh, one of the pastors at one of our life church locations and uh, doing amazing work there. And my wife is also on staff. Uh, she leads the HR team for Life Church. So it's an awesome, fun family thing that we get to live out together, this calling to ministry. Uh, my personal role on the team is central team leader of Life Groups, Life Missions Operations. So what that means is that I lead um, an operations team that oversees anything related to uh, small groups and also local missions and global missions here at Life Church. Okay. And wow. So <laughs> you guys really did go all in. I mean, this has been a talk about Life Church. This is a life commitment that you guys have made. <laughs> yeah. So that's fantastic. You've used the name and uh, exemplified every aspect of it. <laughs> All right. Well, um, let's jump into some of our questions. I, I think it's so fun to to hear different people's backgrounds and different perspectives, um, you know, on ministry, on life, uh, how uh, the kingdom of God and their lives intersect. Mm -hmm. And um, so we'll talk a little bit about that today. But yeah, recently, you and I had a chance to be in Cairo, Egypt together. And uh, the impetus of that was to uh, understand a little bit more about was, what was going on with our Sudanese Arabic oral Bible translation, having completed the New Testament uh, last summer after two and a half years of work, and right. then uh, continuing to go into the Old Testament. And you wanted to look under the hood a little bit. Um, so um, you brought, uh, what, six other teammates of yours. Yeah. And so, you know, give me a little bit in terms of what were your key takeaways from the trip? I know you went to to Beirut as well, but let's talk specifically about Cairo um, in your experience over really, it was just a few days, but uh, what were some of your key takeaways? Man, uh, it was an incredible experience. And I'm so glad that we got to uh, have that, that moment with you also, you and the team. And as I look back on that time, just some key things that stood out to me were <clears throat> first, uh, anytime I'm encountered with the Bible translation movements, I always feel just an increase in my personal passion for scripture. Mm. And there's always this moment of gratitude and of responsibility, um, maybe is the right word, um, to steward that, to steward the gift that we have of having scripture in our language and uh, just a, an increased burden for those who don't yet have that. So I would say that's uh, for sure one key takeaway is um, I never want to take that for granted. Mm, and okay. when you talk with people who are not there yet, it really changes your perspective. Uh, right. I can go home and point to 50 Bibles on my shelf and I've got one on my phone everywhere that I go. Sure. Um, coming face to face with the reality that that is not the case for many people in the world today is a really humbling thing. And uh, I just never want to lose sight of the gift of that. So that would for sure be be one takeaway. Another would be just total amazement and inspiration at the translation team that we talked to. 
uh, these people are just awesome. <laughs> and I'm so impressed uh, just with their dedication and commitment against so many obstacles that they're up against to continue to fight for their community to have access to God's word in their language. And this is like on top of their family commitments. Many of them have other full-time jobs that they're working, but they've dedicated themselves uh, to this movement because they're so passionate about it. And man, I just always walk away inspired by that. And I definitely was the case this time. You know, I can agree with that. I, you know, I've been there several times with that team and I'm just going to walk away uh, always being reminded that they will always look, they will go beyond what we're asking for in mm -hmm. terms of, of delivery of scripture. And, you know, yeah. um, I think it was uh, uh, Amani who uh, had taken a, a, the scripture that she was working with, with Sudanese Arabic, and then taken it to another dialect in the yeah. Nuba mountains where her mother lives and starting to do some work there. And we even found about out about that after the fact. And so it's so fun to see that they absolutely are bought into the to the process of delivering scripture to their people and yeah. there's they will do everything they possibly can in order to do that and and you're right we often take that for granted mm -hmm. um and so i think one of the ways i i would sync up with you and just say hey this gives me a greater appreciation for the scripture that i have access yes. to yes and don't take that for granted and a greater um energy and focus on making sure other people have access to it as well. Yeah, a hundred percent. So you have, I didn't know this until we got on the trip, but you actually lived in Cairo for a while. And so this was not your, well, <laughs> was five weeks. It's close. Yeah, I, I'm calling that living there. Okay. <laughs> So, but I mean, let's face it, most people don't go to any country and stay for five weeks, but let alone um, go and do ministry, get on the ground and actually see some things that maybe other people wouldn't necessarily see. So, um, so going to Cairo wasn't something new for you, yeah. um, but I'm still going to ask you, were there some things that, um, that surprised you mm -hmm. this time about being in Cairo, even though you've lived there before? Yeah, for sure. Man, every, every travel experience always comes with its own surprises. And the last time I was in Cairo was six years ago and then 13 years ago before that. So mm -hmm. things have changed uh, drastically since then. And of course, uh, some things like the pyramids are still the same as they were you know, thousands of years ago, but a lot of things changed. And uh, so that was uh, you know, no surprise, I guess I should say that things have changed. But one thing that was a surprise to me is uh, just the the aspect of the uh, oral community of the Sudanese people. And uh, most of my time previously was just spent primarily with Egyptians. So this was um, just a new people group to be introduced to and to learn from and uh, to see the beauty in. And I have been around uh, oral learners before, but didn't have that lens, didn't have that knowledge. You know, in hindsight, I can see that that's uh, what the case was. But this was the first time I really got to encounter that and, and see how it actually played out in daily life. And uh, I would say probably the most surprising moment to me was actually in the church service that we attended and getting to hear them uh, use portions of the new oral translation, uh, the New Testament that's been completed, and then actually uh, see the practice of this oral learning community mm -hmm. dissect that scripture together was so cool. And uh I think that's a beauty of, of that really close knit community is the pastor was just calling out people in the crowd. Uh, hey, Ed, what do you think about that scripture? And what part did you like? And what did you learn from it? What did, what did that show you about the character of God? And, and how are you planning to apply this? And then he would point to someone on this side and call them out by name and make them stand up and share it. And I just thought what a powerful uh, testament to their commitment to not just uh, have the word of God in their language, but to actually use it and apply it and teach it and discuss it. And that's a really cool thing to get to witness. Yeah, I think um, one of the things that was kind of interesting, and, and you alluded to this, is when you've got Sudanese Arabs that are living in Egypt, they're there as refugees. So even though you might have experienced oral communities, now yeah. you've experienced an oral community that is refugee in nature. Right. Yeah. And so there was a dish, some additional complexities that were inserted into the trip as a result of that. So yeah. that was different, but I think you're right. I think the, um, it's always fun to see how oral communities communicate with one another yeah. and things that would seem foreign to us 
in terms of communication strategy are completely natural to them. Mm -hmm. And so being able to see that uh, on display during a church service is a wildly different kind of service than what we experience in the U.S. or in the West, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, it's not just a proclamation. It's not just a traditional order of worship. But really, in, in this particular case, it was interactive. Yes. Yeah. Um, and I loved it. Um, yeah. You know, Ted also took us through an orality based devotional a couple of the mornings that we were there. And I realized how much of a preference I have for text based learning. <laughs> and uh, man, when we would try to recite back, you know, word for word, uh, some of these paragraphs of scripture, I struggled. And I thought, man, I, I really do rely on having this in written form. And that made me realize how difficult it is when you're trying to learn something out of your natural preference. Mm. And that really helped kind of put me in their shoes and say, okay, if I only had a written version of um, God's word in my language, but that was not my preference, I would be feeling the same way as I right. do in this moment. So uh, that's just great perspective building for me. The shoe was on the other foot. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So were there any things that you learned, uh, and you've alluded to this a little bit, but were there some other things that you learned about spoken on this trip that you weren't as acquainted with before? I mean, we've known each other for a number of years now and have, have related on specific projects before, but this is the first time you'd actually seen something directly face to face. Did that help with any of your understanding or were things in a different perspective once you saw them? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, you all did a fantastic job of just helping us pre-trip prepare for what we were going to experience and understanding what the translation process looks like. But I think actually getting there and seeing the faces and the names behind uh, what's happening is just a different experience. Um, it's mm -hmm. one thing to talk about the stages of the process. It's another thing to actually hear their team share. Um, yeah, I, I took the scripture and then I took it back to my mom's village and started using it there. Um, you had told us, you know, this is a, a gateway language, essentially, that's going to help unlock translations downstream. Um, that was, you know, knowledge that I had going in. But then to hear one of the translation teams actually talk about that in the context of her own family uh, was just tied all the pieces together. So yeah. I would say, um, you know, it was less that I learned new things on the trip about Spoken and more that everything that you shared and everything that I've come to know about Spoken was just affirmed and confirmed through what we experienced with the team there. Yeah, seeing it in a tangible manifestation is a little bit different. It's one yes. thing to hear it. It's one thing to believe it. It's another thing to see it. You know, it's, yeah. scripture even tells us, you know, um, you know, one day, you know, our faith will be made sight, you know, yeah. right. <laughs> so that's a hope that we have. And in this particular case, just as it relates to ministry, it yeah. was able to be made sight for you. Mm -hmm. So um, let's shift a little bit and talk a little bit about Life Church in general. Um, Life Church, man has a passion for scripture. Absolutely. Yeah. And um, gosh, I'd like to know more about, I mean, that doesn't happen by accident. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I know that we would say in any church that we're part of, uh, we value the scripture, we mm -hmm. highly regard the scriptures. Mm -hmm. But you guys have taken that to a whole different level. So could you talk a little bit about the genesis of that? And I know that um, it has to do a little more than you version itself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it definitely does. So I'm going to try to do the, the story justice, but just know I'm not the best person <laughs> to share the story. So I'm piecing together things that I remember here. Um, I, I think you could trace our church's overall passion for God's word and for scripture engagement and distribution all the way back to how our senior pastor, Craig Rochelle, actually came to Christ, mm -hmm. which was, you know, it's a whole story, but um, a key pivotal moment of that was him actually receiving a Gideon Bible uh, from right. someone on his college campus. And so as he has uh, often shared it, like a free Bible changed his life. And wow. so there's a deep passion within him to get to pay that forward. And how can we use our influence, our resources, our connections, our platform, anything that God's given to us, how can we steward that to uh, help people around the world have that same moment? <clears throat> so fast forward now to 2006, uh, Bobby Grunwald, who's one of our pastors and directional leaders on the team. Um, he had an idea for a website uh, to help people engage with God's word. And so uversion.com was launched and it was uh, kind of a flop, like not a lot of people used it. Uh, it was sort of an experiment. 
And almost as kind of a last ditch effort uh, for this tool, uh, they had an idea to try to make it into an app. And at the time, uh, this was literally the first batch of apps coming out as Apple was launching the App Store. So I said, we're just going to try this new app thing, see where it goes. And uh, it was one of the first apps that launched when, when Apple released that and really overnight uh, started blowing up. And so uh, today, it's amazing that that app, which was, was birthed out of the heart of our church and continues to be uh, supported and, and led here at our local church in Oklahoma, uh, is now has now been downloaded on over 500 million devices. So <laughs> we have our our eyes and hearts set on one billion, and are believing that that's you know just going to continue. And whatever we can do to get God's word in someone someone's hands, we we want to do that. You know that's such an amazing story because I mean there's there's a there's multiple elements there. Obviously, I mean, so Craig very clearly says, okay, it was a free Bible that changed my life. I'm going to make free Bibles available for other people. Um, but the persistence of Bobby and Terry mm -hmm. to kind of go, okay, um, we're kind of failing at this. It's really not that exciting. We'll try this angle. We'll yes. in yeah. today's uh, parlance, we'll pivot. Mm -hmm. And they pivoted, and that has changed the world. Yeah, I mean, what a powerful instrument! Mm -hmm. And that's just, I mean, you guys would have never dreamed. I think at that point that there no that way. would have been such a hit. <laughs> No way. Yeah. yeah, it really is amazing. You know, I think back to when I first started attending Life Church. Um, you know, Uversion didn't exist then. Um, we had four locations back then. We're about to launch our 45th. And uh, there was no church online. There was no open network. Um, and not to, I'm not saying all these things to brag on the things that our church has done, but just to say God is in the business of kind of blowing our minds and, and helping us uh, see that things that we would never view as possible are nothing is impossible without his help. So we're very grateful and also take that, um, that influence seriously. We really do. We feel that and we want to steward that the best way that we can, uh, to grow the kingdom. Well, and I think one of the things that, that, you know, going back to you and I hadn't heard that part about Craig, um, you know, getting a free Gideon Bible and that changed his life and his so free resources. And you guys have really, that's become part of your DNA. I mean, it's how can I give away? How can I share what God has entrusted to us? So you really, as an organization, have never been very limiting in terms of you've never had the, the gates up. You've really kind of torn the gates down on a pretty consistent <laughs> basis. So that's been fun to watch because I don't think that's normal, mm -hmm. at least in the, the human DNA. And yeah. so it's great to see a church organization that is saying, OK, what can we do to make life easier for other either other churches um, uh, just Christians in general, the lost, how can we lower the barriers to entry? Mm -hmm. And so I've loved that part of your DNA. Um, you know, certainly scripture has been such a passion for life church. Would you say that that has been what has, uh, you know, really catalyzed your own personal passion for scripture or is there, is there another story that puts, you know, Austin's lens on it that has 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 created its own passion for scripture. Yeah, man, you version is a big part of my story and my connection to scripture. I think um, I, I grew up in an amazing Christian family. I gave my life to Christ at a young age um, and have been involved in the church pretty much my whole life. But if you had asked me, um, you know, ten years ago, what my level of engagement with scripture looked like then, it would be very different than it looked like now. And I just had to fight. Uh, hadn't quite put the priority on it that I should have. And it was really the Uversion app, actually, that helped me uh, find my rhythm, find my um, access to intimacy with God in a way that worked for me and uh, the way that I best connect with him. And I'm just so, so grateful for that. So there's a personal connection there. And then actually, I can also tie, you know, part of my uh, level of passion back to a previous uh, trip to Egypt, actually. I remember in 2010, when I was there, I was in someone's home. And uh, they reached up on top of a large like armoire and pulled down a Bible that was wrapped in silk, uh, like a silk scarf, very right. carefully unwrapped it, uh, opened it and began reading. Uh, and I thought, man, what, um, what reverence. Mm -hmm. and, and you can tell this is a treasure to them. Yeah. And it was a really challenging moment for me having had, you know, Bibles in my home growing up and one on my phone and all of that uh, to say, okay, I have the access, but do I treat 
God's word as precious and as much of a treasure as the, I just saw this person. And that was really kind of a turning point in my perspective too. Wow. So convicted by a person from a different culture, absolutely how they treated scripture yeah. made you look inwardly to say, okay, do, do I love this as much as this person does? Do absolutely. I love God's word? Do I love my connection to God through his word mm -hmm. as much as, as this person does? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. And do I, I, I remember also hearing, um, you know, stories of people who they had one, one paper Bible to share among, you know, a whole church community sometimes. And so they would separate out books of the Bible and, mm -hmm. and share them with each other. So I'll, I'll read the book of John while you're reading Luke. And then when we're both done, we can swap and, and I'll just, I'll, I'll honestly need to memorize as much of it as I can, because once I hand it off to you, I don't have it anymore. And again, there was kind of a, a moment of reckoning of saying, man, am I, am I reliant even on my paper Bible uh, to, to feed me, or am I storing up God's word within me in the same way that this person is? So, right. and there is just so much we can learn from uh, other believers around the world, especially in contexts uh, that are just more challenging toward Christians in general. Yeah, I think, you know, I agree with you. I often, you know, I get humbled every time I go to another country and see, okay, yeah. this, these are how other Christians who don't have the resources that we have, mm -hmm. and this is how they steward yeah. the resources that God has given them. Are we being that same kind of steward? And that obviously is, is always a, you know, a convicting lesson to, to yes. see lived out. Yes. So, you know, traveling to see other places, you know, to do it in a lightweight way to not, you know, um, encroach on those cultures, but to observe and to engage and to learn is really pretty fascinating. A lot of times we think that we have something to offer and usually mm -hmm. it's, we're the ones that are, are learning certainly we want to serve them well and, and provide what they need. But at the same time, we can't, you know, walk away without having our hearts changed, you mm -hmm. know, by seeing, you know, the reality on yeah. the ground, right? Absolutely. Yes. So talk to me a little bit about, I'm going to shift gears again and just say, um, you know, we've had several uh, podcasts in a row here uh, at Spoken that have, has focused on prayer. So mm -hmm. talk to me a little bit about how uh, the role uh, that prayer has played in uh, what we've talked about so far, whether it's the trip itself, whether it was uh, passion about the word of God. Um, what role do you see prayer playing? Yeah, it's a big question. Um, the first thing that comes to mind is, um, you know, intimacy with God is not a one lane thing. Uh, there's, there's prayer, there's scripture, there's worship, there's giving, there's serving. There's, there's so many things that lead us into a deeper relationship with God. And I think when those lanes start to overlap, uh, that's when some really special things happen. And so just for me personally, um, when you take your prayer life and combine that with God's word and begin praying God's word over uh, other people, over situations in your life, over your future, over things you're worried about, um, man, that's a different level. And right. so, uh, you know, that's one thing that comes to mind. Absolutely. We were, you know, covering this trip in prayer knowing that the primary purpose of this trip for us uh, was to capture the story of this Sudanese Arabic translation project and share it with our church. So yes, it's a cool experience for us to get to be there, um, but there was a lot of prayer that went into, and how do we effectively share this in a way that are going to, uh, in a way that's going to help other people feel just exactly what we're feeling in this moment right now. Right. And that's a, that's a, a burden in a good way that I feel in my role is, um, you know, we, we don't send missions teams, uh, we don't do mission trips. Um, so we're really um, focused on helping people give financially to support our partnerships. And then our job is to help share that story back to them and say, when you give, you're a part of moments like this happening. Right. Um, and there's a lot of prayer that goes into that because um, that's people's spiritual growth and development that we're helping influence. And we really want that to be spirit led and uh, not do it the way that we think it should be done, but the way that we really feel that God is is leading our team to do that. You know, that brings up something I really appreciate about Life Church. that I think, you know, what you've done is you said, we're going to demonstrate trust in the indigenous leaders in a given country to do mm -hmm. the work and our, our partners that we're working alongside them in whatever way. And we don't have to, um, uh, we don't necessarily have to send tr uh, teams or missionaries to um, hold them accountable or to uh, control the outcomes. You're yeah. really trusting the outcome to the mm -hmm. power of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And you are giving, you're empowering, you are demonstrating trust 
mm-hmm. in their local leadership. And I think that's a really powerful statement to make to other churches to say, okay, what are we doing? Can we adopt that kind of, of mentality, that ex- um, exhibition of trust mm-hmm. in God yeah. and, and, and through prayer? And I think, you know, when we align ourselves with God, I was just sharing with somebody in the office. I mean, prayer is really an exercise in aligning yourself with God's will. If you look at um, you know, what did Jesus say about prayer? It's always pointing us to saying, are you praying according to my will? Right. Are you really aligning yourself with us? I will do anything that you ask if you pray according to my will. And so, um, man, trying to align ourselves, trying to change how we pray and yeah. think about prayer is a pretty powerful thing. Um, yes. What would you say, just give me a, a personal testimony of, of prayer impact you know, on your life and just, you know, maybe some things that you've prayed for that you've seen God move in an amazing way. And I think that trip for sure was one of them because we went during Ramadan, there yeah. were 16 of us uh, staying at multiple different hotels. The logistics were a little bit on the crazy side. Uh, mm-hmm. There was a million things that could have gone wrong and it went, I think, as smoothly as it could have ever gone. Yeah. Um, so yeah, the the that was an example of how how prayer works some, <laughs> some yeah. miracles, but give me some other points of, of interest or impact as it oh, relates man. to prayer. Hmm. There's a lot of examples that come into my mind. So maybe I'll just throw a few out. Um, you know, I can think of uh, people that I know and love uh, close friends of mine, family members of mine who uh, have had just really miraculous healing in their life. Uh, that I fully believe was because God listened and and heard and answered our prayers. Mm. There are um, there are people that I know at Life Church um, who were on the verge of committing suicide, uh, gun in their hand, and mm. reached out uh, to a pastor, reached out to a volunteer, basically to say goodbye. And through that moment, you know, God intervened. That person mm. was there. They prayed together. Things changed. Today, they're thriving, serving in the church, leading in the church, things that only God could do, you know? Yeah. Um, man, I think about relationships that I know of, um, marriages that were on the brink of divorce, looked hopeless, and those two people committed together. Uh, we will pray and believe that God can turn this thing around, even when it seems so far beyond repair. And today, uh, are in, in the healthiest place that they've ever been in their marriage, uh, seeking God together and uh, in a place of restoration, even stronger than it was before. So one cool, awesome thing about being in ministry is you hear these stories all the time and they right. never get old. You know, they really never get old because you cannot look at those situations and say that it was because of our own effort or it was because of anything um, that that we contributed. You just have to look on and say, God, that was only you. There's no way that this is humanly possible. It's only because of you. And I think that that strengthens your faith uh, to be more bold when things happen in the future to say, God, I've seen you do the miraculous before. So I'm not afraid to ask you to do it again this time, because I know that you can. And if it's your will, I know that you'll do it. Yeah. And one of the things I love about prayer is it's, it's exercising our faith muscle, Mm -hmm. you know, and it's, it's kind of like going to the gym or starting to run or some kind of exercise where you're physically trying to get stronger and you start out weak. Yeah. And, but if you're consistent and you're faithful in your efforts Mm-hmm. Uh, that muscle gets stronger or those lungs get stronger, your heart, heart gets stronger. And, you know, it, the more you pray, the more you uh, really take risks of, mm-hmm. in prayer. Yes. I think the more we see God move mm-hmm. and it reminds us of what he can do. Right. You know, last night at our small group at church, I was talking about the old hymn, count your blessings, name them one by one, mm-hmm. yeah. uh, count your blessings, see what God has done. And yep. so, um, you know, just reminding ourselves of those stories of yes. g- how God has answered prayer mm-hmm. is a great way to build our confidence, not in ourselves, but in God and who right. he is and his yes. faithfulness. Yeah. And yeah. you're right. I mean, it's it, once you've prayed and you've seen God move in a miraculous way, mm-hmm. it gives you the confidence. Oh, he really does love us. He does yes. have a compassion toward us. Yes. He is telling us to get, you know, take up our bed and walk, or he is mm-hmm. saying, mm-hmm. you know, do you want to be healed? Yes, I do want to be yeah. healed. Yeah. And, um, you know, so we have that, that love mm-hmm. and prayer is one of those means to do that. Scripture obviously is another method to do that. But I like the way you said this. There's a, there's various lanes 
um, mm -hmm. that, you know, um, that give us, you know, what does intimacy with God look like in prayer and scripture are two of those ways. Uh, and that's certainly what we've focused on today, but man, you know, to see those overlap, as you say, you know, it is, is where really exciting things happen. And mm -hmm. I think one of the things that, that, you know, we can and should be doing as we think and certainly know more about these translation projects. And we're just one of obviously thousands of projects going on around the world through other translation agencies and through other resource partners. But the, to combine prayer with the trust in the word of God yeah. and what it's going to do when it reaches the, the end audience, yes. you know, and yeah. to pray for the Holy Spirit to move in those environments. And so I think that's one of the things in this podcast, we can, we can extend the invitation to others to say, hey, recognize that you can join in in this prayer effort mm -hmm. um, to join in with, with uh, one of the greatest resources we have, and that is the word of God, yeah. you know, and how that uh, we can trust that it, it never returns void, it never is worthless, mm -hmm. it always has power, um, you know, and even when we think it is powerless, uh, it will, God will show himself. Yes, that's it. Yeah. Uh, and I love, I think that's a great um, challenge for us all to remember is that uh, Bible translation is, is a movement that we need to pray for. We need to uh, continue to ask God for his favor, for his provision, but that's really just the start. Uh, the, the point isn't the translation. The point is what's going to happen when people have that translation and Man. for God to move through that in communities that are impacted. Um, that's, that's really the magic. And that's, that's a, a good reminder for me to, to be praying for both aspects of that. Yeah. And that's one of the things I'm, I'm grateful for this trip. I was grateful that you were able to attend a church service and see God's word being used, yeah. how it was being used. It's not just finished. It's not just completed. It's being used. It's, it's going into people's hearts and minds mm -hmm. and they're walking away with that as part of themselves. Yeah. And so, um, you know, you got to see it lived out. <laughs> yeah. So I'm thrilled about that. Mm -hmm. Well, great. Well, thanks for taking the time with us, Austin, today. I'm so grateful to, uh, for your friendship, mm -hmm. grateful for the encouragement and support from Life Church, but grateful for the time that, that we can share here to just really expose ourselves a little bit uh, to the public to say, you know, this is what we believe. This is what the Word of God means to us. This is what prayer means to us. This is what the body of believers around the world mm -hmm. can do if we're focused on one single goal. So anyway. Thank you for sharing. Glad to have you with me today. Absolutely. Thank you. And just want to say to anyone listening or watching, uh, man, spoken is the real deal. I've gotten to see it with my own eyes now. And uh, if you are considering getting behind their work or you're wanting to learn more, take that next step uh, because it really is life-changing uh, for the people on the other side of this work. So just can't speak highly enough of you guys. And I'm excited to continue to see what God does as we partner together and, and look forward to a future where there is no one um, without scripture in their language. Amen to that. Glad to be in the fight with you, my friend. Absolutely. You too. All right. Take care. You too. See ya.